Welcome to Copyright Basics. This is Jennifer Zerke, Copyright Specialist here at SFU. This video will introduce copyright law in Canada, including what types of materials are protected by copyright, what rights are included, and how long copyright protection lasts. Visit the website copyright.sfu.ca for more information and resources, or contact the SFU Copyright Office at copy at sfu.ca with any questions. The information in this video pertains specifically to the Simon Fraser University community. This information is provided as a professional and not a legal opinion. The contents of this video should not be relied on as legal advice. Canada's Copyright Act and SFU's copyright policies govern the use of works at SFU. The types of materials defined as works and protected by copyright include literary works like books, poems, journal articles, and websites, dramatic works like plays and films, sound recordings of music, speeches, performances, or other sounds, artworks like photographs, drawings, maps, paintings, and sculptures, musical or theatrical performances and speeches or presentations, and communication signals such as radio programs, as well as other similar materials in each of those categories. Copyright is the right to copy a work, but it also includes the right to perform, publish, broadcast or exhibit the work, to translate or adapt the work, and a number of other similar actions, as well as the right to authorize others to do these things. These are things that only the copyright holder has the legal right to do. This is often the creator, which could be an author, an artist, or a composer, but copyright can be transferred, for example, to a publisher. And there are also situations where an employer owns copyright in its employees' works. The Copyright Act talks about the right to copy the work or a substantial part of the work. Substantial is not defined in the Act, but in practice it's defined both quantitatively, meaning anything more than a fairly small portion of the work, as well as qualitatively, if the part you want to use is the defining scene from the work, or sums up the premise of the entire work, for example, there will be a lower threshold for considering that part substantial. There is no copyright in an insubstantial portion of a work, which is why you can generally quote a couple of paragraphs from a textual work or use a few still frames from a film without requiring permission, depending, of course, on the qualitative value of that part. The Copyright Act is intended to be technology neutral meaning that it treats a book's text and a website's text, or a painting and a digital illustration, in the same way. This also means that material found on the web, even though someone posted it there for the entire world to see, is still protected by copyright, so you can't freely use something just because it was posted online. However, the asterisk is there because instructors actually do have the right to use many types of web materials in certain ways in the classroom. You can learn more about using web materials for instruction in our other videos. The Copyright Act also aims to provide a balance between the right of an author or other creator to benefit and profit from their work and the right of the rest of society to access and use such works for the public good. It is generally recognized that access to and use of other creators' works inspires the creation of more works. So there are exceptions in the Copyright Act that allow certain uses of works in specific circumstances, like I just mentioned with web materials in the classroom. In Canada, copyright protection happens automatically as soon as a work is created, as long as it satisfies these criteria. It must be original, meaning not simply a copy of something else and also displaying at least a minimal amount of creative and intellectual endeavor. It must be fixed in physical form, whether digital or analog, and it must have been created in Canada or another country that is a signatory to an international copyright treaty such as the Berne Convention. These treaties include most countries in the world and ensure that a work created in Canada will be protected in those other countries under a reciprocal agreement. There is no need for a work to be registered with the Canadian Intellectual Property Office for it to be protected by copyright, or even for it to display the copyright symbol. Although, if you are creating works, there are definitely benefits to registering them and to displaying the symbol or including a copyright statement. Things that are not protected by copyright include thoughts and ideas, since they are not fixed. They would have to be embodied in some form to be covered. Facts and data are also not covered. 
for example, environmental data or the periodic table of the elements, are not copyrightable. And neither are depictions of data that don't meet the minimum originality requirement, like simple tables or graphs. However, if someone takes those data and creates something original from them, like a narrative description, a video, or a more original visual like a diagram or poster, those works would most likely be protected by copyright. You could still take the raw data from any of those works and use it without permission, but not the text, video, or poster itself created by that other author, and you would always cite the source of that data. Single words and short phrases also can't be protected by copyright. Keep in mind, though, that these could be protected by trademark law, if used by a company or organization as a tagline or slogan, and if they form part of a logo, there may be copyright in that design, including the words. Copyright protection does not last forever. This ties in again to users' rights and the role of authors, artists, and composers in inspiring future creation. The general rule for the length of copyright protection in Canada is 50 years from the end of the year in which the creator dies, or the last creator to die if the work was co-authored. This is true even if the creator no longer owns copyright in that work, such as if they have assigned copyright to a publisher. This is the Life Plus 50 rule. When the copyright term expires, that work joins what is called the public domain, which means it can be freely copied or used in any way without the permission of the copyright holder or any payment. For example, there are no longer any limitations on who can perform or republish Shakespeare's plays or reproduce the Mona Lisa. Be aware that there can be situations where multiple separate copyrights exist in the same work, such as when there are distinct parts of the work contributed by different authors. This is different from a co-authorship, such as two authors writing a book together, where copyright is shared. A song, for example, may have separate copyrights for the lyrics and the music if they were written by different people. In these cases, copyright may expire in one part of a work before another part, so you might be able to reproduce or reuse the lyrics before you could use the music, or vice versa. Another example would be an anthology of stories or poems by different authors. There is also copyright in performances and sound recordings that is separate from the copyright in the work being performed or recorded. So while a playwright owns copyright in a written play, there is also copyright in any performance of the play, and additionally, in any recording that captures the audio of that performance. Copyright in live performances and sound recordings, as well as broadcast signals and unscripted home movies, lasts for 50 years from the end of the year of creation or publication, not the creator's death date. There are some other exceptions to the Life Plus 50 rule, which either come from previous versions of the law or deal with unusual situations. If you are interested in using historical photographs taken before 1949, works published posthumously, works by unknown creators, or works created by provincial, territorial, or federal government bodies under Crown copyright, check the website copyright.sfu.ca for more information or contact the Copyright Office with any questions. Copyright infringement is any violation of copyright law. Direct infringement means directly violating a right under the Copyright Act by doing any of the things which only the copyright owner may do. These are the things I mentioned at the beginning, including reproducing the work, performing it, broadcasting or publishing it, translating or adapting it, and so on. Secondary or indirect infringement means copying or distributing a product that itself infringes copyright, for example, further distributing a pirated film. You can be held liable for copyright infringement even if you were not the one who originally copied the material. This is especially important with the internet because it is so easy to find and share things online, but not necessarily easy to tell where they came from or how they got there. Copyright infringement is different from plagiarism. Plagiarism is presenting someone else's ideas or work as your own, whether you take an exact copy or paraphrase. If you don't give the creator credit for the work or the ideas behind it, you're plagiarizing. It's unethical and a serious academic offense but not illegal. Copyright infringement is making an exact copy of someone else's written, artistic, or dramatic work without permission, whether you credit them or take credit yourself. Copyright infringement is illegal, as well as unethical and an academic offense. The two often overlap, but are separate concepts. The role of the Copyright Office is to educate and advise the SFU community. We don't go looking for problems. 
but we want to make sure you're aware of the possibilities because publishers and other copyright holders do search for and find violations of their rights. In a serious case of infringement, you could face disciplinary measures within the university, in addition to any legal action taken by the copyright holder. Thank you for watching Copyright Basics. If you have any questions about the content of this workshop or about any copyright issues, contact the Copyright Office at copy at sfu.ca or visit the Copyright website for more information and resources.